Greetings everyone, this is Lodrick and this is a game War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is my hmm, play by email match against Kilroy. Today we will check the 18th December 1941. And it's still a scenario one day, one turn day setup. So very common special, no modifications. Uh, so far it just looks okay for me. Yesterday when you were last turn my my subs failed to hit the important stuff and only the small stuff a uh, small yeah not so important cargo ships. Today we continue with the AG but a smaller one so nice to sink it but this yeah only minor stuff. Additionally we are landing here Picking up still the last bases in north of Borneo. And a smaller tanker, nothing big. Yesterday was a big AO we failed, today we think a small tanker. And here we fail again a bigger cargo ship. This are some... not sure if they are Dutch, I think they was grey. You can see here this color, this is grey and so far is... So PT boats, if they are no American or Dutch, we will see maybe it end. And it's at the end, I mean, they are all allies, so all enemies of the Empire, they must sink anyway. But it's night, it's 11,000 yards, so it will be a lot of shells with no hits at the end. Let's see. Yeah, already breaking contact. Zero moonlight, so... Without radar, and even with radar, a PT boat well, maybe a really hard to hit. More is sinking. Likely this cargo, uh, tanker. And there is again a um, sinking sound of a submarine, very special, this underwater implosion. Cushing, so here really the last bases in the north part. Normally it's of course the west part of Borneo, but the map is turned. Tarawa. Uh, the first attempt of uh, invasion of Tarawa was uh, um, interrupted. Uh, but this time looks there's no carrier force jumping out of uh, nowhere. Some counter battery fire on my light cargo ship. Luckily, there's nothing more on board. Today, we find the AO. If it's the same AO, I don't believe this is much far away. But one AO, a bigger one. Nice. And the APD. So, and loaded APD. I mean, they have not much capacity, but whatever what is on this APD will maybe go down. Okay, that would be too much. So. Maybe the submarines are back in the game. And one of my checks gets killed. So you can see there are still too many allied fighters making cap. I sent my carrier division 
uh, northwest direction of Christmas Island and it looks like there are still some Dutch-British uh, ships around south of Java. Kilroy still try to maybe smuggle out uh, supplies, oil, fuel or units. And the daily sweep and contest uh, of the skies of Singapore. In day by day, there are less buffaloes uh, uh, taking off and try to uh, battle it out. But these buffaloes are always get damaged and return to base. They don't want to die. The hardcore guys. Two out of four, that is a uh, progress. And Bali Papan have, uh, these are the P-40s, they just killed my Jake, the scout plane. Now I try to get rid of them. Airfield, airfield, and these are all the repaired uh, P-35 and P-26 that uh, I damaged before. So Kilroy, you here evacuate all of these P-40s. It looks like to Tarakan and uh, Bali Papan. Then he let only this uh, yeah, really training aircraft back in the Philippines. to the base again. Nothing more left in Singapore. So now we start with support bombardment of China. This is a uh, terrible job of uh, getting rid of uh, forces in the jungles. Very hard to hit. So, if I see any unit in clear terrain, 
This is the target I go for. So, Christmas Islands are still uh, light cargo ships, more of this Dutch light cargo ships, maybe full of supplies. Uh, yeah, only one light cargo ship. Yeah, but my torpedo robots cannot find the target. This can happen. Yeah, and here, unluckily, uh, there are still some P-26 in the skies. But luckily I can outmaneuver them because they are simply too slow. But would you, yeah. So this is again a torpedo attack on these uh, shitty destroyers, and they even capable of uh, yeah, downing one of my torpedo bombers. And my torpedo bombers, of course, are not able to get any hit on these destroyers. Very crazy. So, payback time, maybe this torpedo attack is more successful, some cargo ships. But you can see I'm also running out, I'm long time out of torpedoes, so I can only use now horizontal uh, strikes. But this is, this 250 kilogram bombs are the same what the dive bomber is using, and the Kate can, can carry two of them. Of course, the hit chance of a Kate is lower than a dive bomber, so maybe at the end it's the same damage potential. So, two cargo ships with some troops on board. Likely they will go down. sound Battle on the way to Xi'an. I win the victory. I able to break, but you can see again, Kilroy really dig in, and he only use one unit, or he don't really support his units. He only dig in, and uh, I can win every battle nearly, but I still have casualties. Most are only disabled. But all this disabled cannot fight more and need to uh, rest. So I slowly losing attack value battle by battle. So this is now clean up the pocket. The British uh, are surrendering here. The next base force. The 
the next space was one to the jungle. Uh, I don't like it. Yeah, this is my forces gets bombarded. Tarawa, this time no defense. And the next battle of Guam. I can destroy the fort level and I kill more of the Samaritans, but there are somehow still any someone left. Normally it's really only the base force. Huh. Strange. Good. So uh, overall straightforward turn for me, no surprise. My Japanese submarines was more successful than the turn before, but my carrier force was only able to find the small cargo ships uh, still around in Java. So, and the air force was, yeah, a little. Uh, I think we skill how many? Eight to five. So, that is. Nothing in favor for me, but yeah. Three buffaloes, two P26, so these are the fighters here, yeah, Kilroy lost. And uh, two Warhawks, luckily also two Warhawks, this is maybe better or more important in the Ka in Catalina. And for me it is a torpedo bomber, a Jake, zero ops losses and some army bombers in uh, in China burns through. So eight to five. It, it, the kill ratio is compared to what we have now, we have roughly a nine, 3 to 1 kill ratio, so this is normally in favor of kill roy at the end. But I would say, if I have at least a 1 to 1 kill ratio, it is never bad. Mm, yeah. And ship sunk. Yeah, there was more sinking. But uh, this has a con uh, yeah, the ships they go for down for sure. Maybe the biggest is this AG, but I don't know if it's really so important ship. No, maybe the AP was uh, this uh, weakest class destroyer conversion was maybe more important to think. Good, an army loss point is we are now at uh, uh, 1200 to 15. So still roughly 100 to 1, no, not nearly 100 to 1, but a good ratio so far, let's say this. And for me, uh, 50 points uh, ships losses so far um, compared to maybe 650. So kill ratio of 10, 11, 12, 13 to 1, uh, nice so far. So far everything is okay, but I f found no enemy carrier, no battleship, uh, nothing really critical I think so far, only some destroyers and like cruisers. Oh, in China, yeah, again, slowly progress, march on Xi'an, uh, march on Nanyang, and also getting rid of these Chinese forces in the pockets. My Mongolian army is now moving north to clean up the railway and the road in the northern part of China. Here is Lenzhou, the war area, still fighting out and blocking me. And yeah, everywhere is still clean up operations. No real big uh, push for a big city. I mean, you could also go immediately for the big cities, but uh, yeah, like I said before, I play it more steady, steady and safe, and no rush here. Um, we have no battle of Burma so far. Battle of Malaya, Malaya is nearly over. There's only two bases in Malaya left and then there's only Singapore. Okay, at that time Singapore belongs to Malaya, now not more. So, Oxy three bases, Georgetown, uh, Taiping and uh, Zhuabo. But uh, these bases will fall soon. Here is only the last uh, forces. They are also trapped. So these forces are trapped. These forces are trapped. They all surrender. I mean all of these forces are trapped. But uh, 
But um, this is the forces I will fight before we have the Battle of Singapore, Fortress Singapore. Uh, here, only a side note. This is one of my cargo ships. This, uh, I mean, this is a small three point cargo ship. Get a hit, a system damage burning. Impossible to really save it more, but. I will, I mean, I try to take the base and then maybe I can uh, stand down the ship and then we can make firefight, but uh, yeah, very unlikely, very unlikely. One more cargo ship lost in my case. Uh, Mindanao is, uh, I took Davao and uh, the northern base is already. Uh, I will now shift this invasion force uh, to take also these islands here and then help. Uh, with Mindanao to get the Mindanao normally at the same time done, I'm also done with maybe Luzon so that I yeah, that I finish the op operation in the Philippines latest mid of February completely. In the Jochen game I was successful in Luzon but not in Mindanao. And uh, I really believe that at least in the with the Philippine forces uh, it's make no sense to wait for reinforcements, uh, at least here in the source, you must strike simply fast because all of these Filipino forces are weak in morale, so the AV is maybe on paper there, but they simply will not attack. Small other issue here, uh, my carrier was here, I had detection on this task force, this Yakuza mine layer, and I moved here in this direction because I want to go source, and I, I thought, okay, this will be in range. But somehow my carrier decided to fly to Manila. Wow. Yeah, sometimes you must really uh, manage everything. You also can see that these are British forces, so there's a brown, so these are also British destroyers, looks like. Uh, but, uh, the damage is with 61, only very small repair, so. I'm um, not sure how Kilroy play the game here in Manila, but maybe he, he tried to defend all three bases to the last moment. I was able to bring in some uh, tank units so far in Manila, the big bunch of armies arriving in the next two days. So maybe 21st, 22nd, we have a battle of Manila and see how fast I can take the city. And then I can cut the supplies from Manila with the industry to Clarkfield. Uh, here is nothing, submarines fine, here is no movement more, looks like Le De Leon. Kilroy is not moving more wicker assets from Balipapan to Soabaya. I was hoping that maybe there is more going on, but no, there are still many forces in Soabaya, but I can really not attack here too much, there is still this whole Java air force left, and uh, I don't have the forces now to battle them out, so I must keep my cruisers uh, a little outside of the area of the strike range, or I must operate its edge. My carrier is here, and I detected here more forces, so I will maybe try to get rid of this two, four more ships. I don't really expect it too much. These are PT boats, and this is one ship and one ship. So maybe already Kilroy uh, sent most of his uh, units back to Australia. Or I sunk them on the way. Uh, but I'm missing simply the heavy cruisers, destroyers, battleships, so Prince of Wales, uh, Renown is still somewhere on the ocean. Plus all of the American eight battleships and two uh, aircraft carrier. So far I really sunk no military equipment with meaning. So you also can see here is already my cruiser formation with uh, amphibious assault unit. So I already pack up and prepare the next step. I'm already going now to Port Moresby simply by rushing and uh, not let uh, Kilroy have any time to reinforce Port Moresby and um, maybe more take, Mos take Port Moresby to help secure the base of Rabul. Not that Port Moresby will give much melee or additional striking potential because this strait is normally always for the allies maybe not easy to use 
because you have here so many bases the Japanese can take and then always can make airstrikes so if I attack from Lei or if I attack from Pop Mosby, I think there's no really big difference so if you have Lei so it's only maybe for good for a submarine base well, yeah. or if you take Darwin then it's always as straight as closed so Darwin or Pop Mosby and there's for sure no shipping more possible for the Allies but I will take it only because in the Jochen game, Jochen used now his heavy bombers always to make night strikes or uh, air strikes on Rabul, and this is a potential damage and threat against my base. And Rabul is important. I all is based on Rabul for the Japanese. At least so long you don't have something better. So and my other submarines are here in position trying to find something. Not that I have really too many submarines here. Uh, yeah, I always check my uh, task forces if there is any uh, potential or um, detection. But this is a detection um, that because uh, I invade this base, so yeah, the other player know I was here. But it's not a detection from a unit, it's only from the base. Uh, what else I can say? I'm not more sure. Uh, I can maybe shortly. Uh, discuss some stuff I operating here at the same time I always battle with Japan I always try to rush with this I reform all of my not all but most of my uh, float plane units I already I reform them all to maximum 24 this is uh, only possible you have this uh, I don't know more if it's already still here ah uh, no no more but I use the scout cruisers, we have normally three of them and um, at least uh, two of them is with 24 and the third one is with 20. Uh, so I only reform them, put airplanes inside and then let them train. And sometimes I normally really only use uh, two options. Most of time I use a full squadron like 24, 24. So every pilot have a own airplane or I use three. But I really don't know if it's a difference of one, two, or three, or a full. If it really helps the the, um, the potential success to get an additional skill point for each pilot. I have this feeling like if you have three, it is better than only one or two. But if you have five or six, I see no real difference more. But I never really make the 100% calculation. So... I think there's only difference if every pilot have a pi uh, airplane or at least you have two or three better. Yeah. And I, would, I also don't overstack my pilot uh, air wings. You can normally, I think, put always 25% more pilots inside. Like now you can put up to eight more, so 33% uh, additional pilots. Uh, I never do this and I have uh, never enough pilots. Uh, I have more than enough uh, training capacity with this uh, air wings. Not so far, I later on, later in the game, I also realized something, but this is of course uh, only if you're an engineer and if you really want to max out everything out of this game, then you there's some other potential benefit. Because by, for me, no reason why, but the game separate between two different kinds of air wings. You have this kind of air wings you can break you can divide it in three smaller units. So I can make out of this 888. So ABC. I can also rebuild it. And then you have air wings. Like... This one. It is also an air wing. Like this one before. You can... Where's the difference? I would say there is no difference. I reform them both. But this you can break. In this you cannot break. And uh, you have a lot of these uh, cruisers at the beginning of in the war. Mm, I think they are now in Hong Kong. Yeah. This is uh, the air wing of, uh, I think this is the original Congo air wing. Yeah. Airwing one of uh, um, Congo. In this one, you cannot break. Many of these cruisers they have one or two airwings, 
uh, with one or two at the beginning and you cannot break them. You can reform them, but you cannot break them. Yeah, now you can see, of course, uh, okay, I, I reform the one airing to the maximal capac capacity of this, so of three, and then it's fine. But if you want to have the maximum out of this game, you would say, no, I don't do this. If a airwing I cannot break, I bring it to 24 and let it train. And I better take an airwing I can break to 24, I can break, then I make out of this airwing a 9 and break it down to 3 times 3, because most of the Japanese cruisers and battleships they always have a capacity of 3. So you can fill 3 capital ships with only one airwing if you break it. Let me see if I can find it. So this is also, this is a, a battleship own airwing, cannot break. But I don't know if I have more stuff here. No, of course not. Maybe in Amoy. No, also nothing. But uh, this is uh, more normally the idea. So I I go to later on. I go here. I check for air wings. I can break down, reform them then only to what I need. So normally I make out of this as nine. And uh, then I can divide them and then I can fill up three ships. Then I have simply more. I still have my capital ships full of uh, scout planes, but I have more air wings ready for training. And uh, you can also pick this up with some other stuff because I think there are two air wings in Japan, in Tokyo. They are special because you cannot reform them. You only can reform them maybe in December 44. So they are with four and I think there's a second one also. You can, do, you can still break this. And the Japanese, they also have a dozen of these light cruisers and they only have a capacity of one. And then you can use these two air wings to fill up up to six of your light cruisers with cargo planes. Because once you load these airplanes on a ship, the attachment will be uh, disappeared and changed to independent. So then you can get them out of Japan for free. And you fill six of your cruisers with airplanes and you get six air squadrons out of your cruisers. You can reform them all and then you have six times 24 training slots again. But again, it's only if you really want uh, this potential to maximize your capacity of training for Japan. And if it's really necessary is the other question. What is the benefit? It's depending on the player. But I can only say that I'm running out of uh, pilots soon. I will uh, create more wings and empty my pool more and more. And then I will, I think in five or ten, ten turns, there's nothing more left. So when the, I, 100 pilots you better keep maybe in the pool. Good. Only to show or talk about this a moment. And maybe industry is so far everything fine. I'm not sure if I ever talk about this, but uh, a short overview of my engines. So again, you can see it. I have two for every engine, physical, uh, for every type, only the 43, because this is before the Tojo and the Helen. Here I put three and you don't, here you start with a pool of zero. So I add always three factories for 43 and the rest is always two. And I also keep only the H61 of them the, the, with the 80 and to, uh, the two others you start with the game I change to one of 43 and one to 45. Uh, simply because I really think you don't must rush this H60 because you never get uh, the airframe uh, ready. Why? I, I make a roughly a calculation. I think it's not really helpful to get this bonus of 500 for this engine. There's simply not enough airframes based on this you really need. But uh, again, up to the player. Zero, my airframe production here now, I produce this uh, K1 mainly because it belongs or it's based on an engine. It's not more under production, so I have 100, 120 engines I think in stock, and I won't consume them. So I can. I have only a factory of 10. So maybe for roughly one year, I can produce this airframe 
then every engine is consumed. And latest, maybe in one year, I have a, a better airframe I can produce. And then backup is, of course, the K2. This is based on the H35. And I, the reason is why I have the K1. I think the K1 or K2, they don't, they're very much a similar. I think K2 is a little faster, but it's, they're always too slow. They never escape an enemy fighter normally. And they have no protection and all the stuff, so they're dying. If there's enemy fighter, they're both dead. So, but I can save H35 engines if I produce this K1. And the K1, I get the engines for free. So if I use the engines, nice. If not, then they're waste. And uh, there's no upgrade pass. I mean, the problem is only you cannot upgrade from the 1 to the 2. But also, this is the last of its type. So later on, if you get the B6 torpedo bomber, you must um, rebuild your factories anyway. Yeah. Uh, anything else here? Anything else here? Nothing really too special. The same with the N. I produce the N in small quantities to consume this engine. Because out of all of this one engine bombers, light bombers the Japanese have, I think the N is the only one of course, or at least the best one with a 250 kilogram bomb. Mm. And the either I only keep under production for training. But you don't really need to produce here many. Similar to the Fusenate. At the beginning I, I let them run now because I have simply no other airframe I really need produce. And this is only for training. That I have some airframes that I can later on fill some squadrons to train pilots. These are not frontline duty uh, equipment. I also keep the production of uh, Key Forty Six low because in the also in the in the Jochen game I realized you not really need any big quantities of this Key Forty Two, uh, Key Forty Six Edition Two. They not. This is very hard for the allies to kill them. So. I don't invest in any supplies. Uh, yeah, that is all I can say about my production. And here is the last small look on my AMD tool. So some roofs. The later this is, I think, very typical. This is this is the last. I think about this every time again, and uh, yeah, this is with realistic AND, and this is scenario one. So of course, scenario two have other setup, and if you don't have realistic AND, it's also a different uh, setup. Uh, but we also have the uh, upgrade is by player choice. So if I only push here a little more the Shinden before I always had only one factory. Now I have here two factories. This is maybe a bit in difference. And Wendy, I scale down to one uh, to two factories in Jochen game f3 Oscars and Tojo I think I keep the same uh, this is more or less all what I had in in Jochen game I only go down only to one key 95 because this is a it's only a recon airplane this will not really help you change the war and I push a little more for the key 83 it's this Japanese P-38 edition, I would say, and I cannot say much more. I would only simply say it's a, a good high altitude sweeping airplane and nothing more. Frank is always important to get, so I have here five factories. The same with George. It's a good Japanese land-based fighter, but it's land-based. And this is, yeah, what uh, and one Denko, one night fighter, Francis, bro. And the problem is with this night fighter equipment, even if you, so far I understand it, even if I push this airframe much earlier on, I get the airframe, but I don't get the radar faster. So if to get the airframe much earlier than before the radar arrive, and the radar arrive first in April 44, I think, and June 44, then you have the airframe without radar, and I'm not so sure how good a night fighter is working without radar, really. Yeah, uh, yeah, good. Thank you all. See you next time. Take care. Bye bye.